evening everybody, Carl Biker here, a lovely Saturday evening, been working all day, thought I'd come out and get some peace and this is as peaceful as it gets, all I can hear is the odd bird, let's spoil that, just heading past this huge load of, um, well I think it's a metaphor for one of my videos, I'm in the middle of nowhere because I'm a little bit kind of lost. I decided to go exploring and there's an arrow there so there you go I'm found again. <laughs> I decided to go exploring. I actually came down from that direction. I'm really hoping this direction is better because it was pretty awful that way. I was looking right into the sun and the road was getting worse and worse and worse and then eventually not there anymore and I found I was off-roading and uh, I'm on Pilot Power 3's. These tyres are not made for off-roading. One of those roads it was as well where, where, the, where there was tarmac or concrete there was also a lot of grit. And uh, also this is actually a marsh and the, both sides of the road have collapsed over there. So you found you riding into the sun along gravelly roads with big holes and the bike steering itself. So I'm hoping this way is better. Please let this way be better. I don't like the sudden rounding a corner and finding no road, just mud. I came down here to try and get a new intro clip. I thought a nice little video near uh, a bridge and I'd found a, a bridge over troubled water. No, a bridge over some water and um, on Google, Google Maps. And I thought that looks quite nice. A lot of wildlife here as well, there's a pheasant crossing the road there. Slowest pheasant I've ever seen. Ah, yeah, off he goes. Uh, yeah, I found it on Google and I thought that could be a nice looking bridge. And when I got there, it wasn't. It was a kind of uh, crumbling brick bridge. And the water behind it was green and full of mozzies. So I thought as I try and find my way out, I would record you a little video. A little bit of babble. I haven't really got anything to talk about. It was quite um, quite a surprisingly bad road. I guess it's the tractors that use it and this one maybe is used by cars from these farms. Maybe that's why the arrow's there to keep you going this way instead of the other. Because the middle of the road was about a foot higher than the sides where it's slowly disappearing into the marsh. Oh, this is much better. Famous last words, those are, aren't they? Motorbikes are brilliant devices for exploring, aren't they? Like bicycles, they can go through narrow gaps so you can get to places that you wouldn't be able to get in a car. But unlike bicycles, they've got an engine. So you can go explore in places that are hundreds of miles away. Bunny! <laughs> I think Bunny didn't see me coming and then suddenly realised. And what we got here? Wood pigeons? Aye, wood pigeons. Flying stomachs that they are. This is more like it. Proper road. I think I've done enough exploring for today. I've got a dark visor on and the sun is heading across the uh, horizon in the not too distant future. I think this is possibly the worst time of night to be riding. I say of night, I mean it's not night yet, it's uh, what is it? 8.42 according to my uh, Kawasaki clock. Clockasaki. So the worst time in the evening, I think. It's that time where the sun's right in your eyes, so you know that the person behind you, if they're coming up quick, probably can't actually see you at all. Till the very last minute. And quite often you can't quite see what's ahead of you either. Got to take that extra bit of care. And it's also that time of night where I suspect it would be sensible to put lights on. But everybody else 
leaves it another half hour. Obviously the bike has automatic lights so I, uh, I don't have to put them on but I would put them on anyway if I had to uh, turn them on and off myself. That said, if I had to turn them on and off myself I'd probably hook them up somehow so that they came on with the bike <laughs> but with the option of turning them off. I remember a long time ago talking to somebody who was completely against lights on bikes being automatic but I do think it's a good thing it does make you more visible it's a shame that lights on cars are all starting to become automatic too because then you disappear in that sea of car lights at the minute though this van in front of me and the car in front of that neither of them's got lights on so I guess they're not automatic or they're that type of automatic lights where they only come on on the front and then you see people riding around all night with front lights and no rear lights <laughs> and they don't quite understand why you're flashing them and saying put your lights on I only have I can see the beams British summertime so time to gravel everything with this horrible top dressing they've done a bit near where I live and um, it lasted a couple of weeks before the road surface started to melt and the cars started pulling all the gravel out of it. I might have said that in a previous video. The problem is that I'm recording these videos quite often uh, a long time before I put them out and I might have five or six that I've got recorded and not edited. So I have a feeling I may have said that already or it may be in the, uh, what they call it, the cutting room floor. I may have already got rid of it. If I've done a video that I wasn't particularly happy with. There seem to be many of them at the moment that huge mound of poo at the beginning of the video represents how I feel about quite a few of my videos recently the ones that haven't made it out so if you're thinking the ones that have made it out are the ones I was talking about imagine the quality of the ones that didn't the one good thing about having the sun in your face of course is you can be fairly confident that the people coming towards you from in front can see you this uh, steamy Gotham City-esque thing to my left it's quite hard to see through the bushes which you'll be able to see in a second this is BP at Salt End this is proper Gotham City isn't it it's uh, just on the River Humber you see the docks are over here as well quite an interesting place I, uh, I've struck if it wasn't getting on and at the limit of me getting back home before it gets dark and I, I'm pushing my luck with a dark visor I think I'd go and have a closer look at that tonight because with the mist that's coming in you see it's starting to disappear the sun already with the mist that's coming in I think that would make a cracking intro with that in the background I have to get the clear visor out on a slightly misty night and come out when it's properly dark because the thing's lit up like Christmas really is quite an impressive thing it's a BP plant where they process oil so they make all sorts of uh, petrochemicals these if you can see these things lined up here these are blades for wind turbines this is where they uh, do a lot of the turbine manufacturing another place I'm gonna to have to come and look at properly at some point but yeah the uh, the VP thing making all your petrochemicals petrol various other things fascinating place really I've got nothing no topic to talk about I wonder what's in this van gold bullion perhaps I worked for a company for a while that I probably could name now but I'm not going to because it was uh, I did sign a non-disclosure agreement but I worked for them for quite a while and they um, I was writing some software for them that dealt with routing of their vehicles and they had vans like that so they had two main types of van the the one that you see turning up where It'll be outside a petrol station or near a cash machine or 
going to a shopping centre, supermarket, that kind of thing to get the takings and that, that particular type of van has four people in the back usually one in the front and up to one and a half million pounds of cash in the back in a series of safes and bags it's quite interesting I was tracking the money so we could see um, where all the money was at any one point which safe money had been put into we could uh, let them count the money and record all that detail and then we could work out who was thieving <laughs> and then the, the big trucks the big trucks were much more exciting you see them going in and out of the uh, depot um, but the big trucks were really exciting they were they kind of looked like articulated lorries I mean I work for a food company at the minute uh, selling food and uh, they didn't look too much different to the articulated lorries that we used to ship stuff to our stores. The only difference was that the steel that the sides of the uh, trailer was made of was about four inches thick and allegedly could stop an AK-47. I, I assume it means the bullet shot out of one, not just you know somebody running maniacally at the side of it with an AK-47 and bashing on the side of the truck. But they used those to transport cash and gold and they were insured for up to £15 million pounds worth hence needing quite a lot of protection yeah, it, was, it was a really interesting little job we were doing tracking all that kind of stuff around and so I got to go in the depot and I got to go in the counting room and I've never seen so much money and I've never seen so much money treated with such disrespect <laughs> The trucks would turn up and they would throw bags through a window, down a chute and into the counting room where it would immediately just be thrown into a corner in these big bags and I'd, uh, this is when I was trying to get together the requirements and understand the business problem so they were throwing this money into the corner and I was stood there saying, so how much money is this? and a uh, chap goes over and looks at the bag and says, oh these aren't much, these are about 15, 20,000 pounds a bag uh, that bag there, that's a bigger one. Uh, that's half a million. And, uh, you know, just go through all these different amounts of money. And they're just thrown in a corner in a plastic bag. Well, my camera just changed files. I had to go beep up. But it did sound a little bit of a lazy beep up. So I wonder, I might be at the end of my battery now, life now. And I've been talking for a long time. And I'm going to have to chop a lot of this out anyway. So. I'll thank you, the hardcore watcher who made it through all of this inane drivel. Um, you're either say, a hardcore watcher or a glutton for punishment or some kind of masochist. But thank you anyway for watching. Ride safe, everyone. And I'll talk to you all again soon.